So if you want to stick around, make sure to like and subscribe and hit that little bell notification to notify if you... What is... I've always wanted to say that. Now that I get a chance, I blow it. I don't even... Welcome to my channel. My name is JC and I create videos that are hacks, how to's and challenge results that help you live your best life. And today I have the results of a recent challenge that I did where I just finished the Whole30 diet for the past month. So if you are interested in seeing what this program is, how it was during the 30 days and my results afterwards, then stick around. So first, let's talk about what the Whole30 diet is. Basically, it's a short-term elimination style diet where the goal is to investigate how your body reacts to certain food categories by flushing them out of your system for 30 days and then slowly reintroducing them back in. So that way you kind of figure out which ones are your triggers and which ones might be making you feel kind of icky or might be hindering some of your weight loss. So some of the rules um, include eliminating several different categories of foods. The first category that you cannot have is grains. So this includes rice, corn, rye, wheat, basically any kind of bread or pasta. Um, and this was something that I found really easy actually for myself personally. I am not a big carb person. I think that's why I'm so good at low carb diets because I normally skip the tortilla and go for burrito bowls or I don't eat that much rice or beans anyway. Um, so getting rid of these grains I thought was pretty easy for myself personally, um, but no grains. Another category that you cannot have are legumes. So beans, peanuts, um, soy products. So this includes soy sauce, edamame, miso. Um, you also can't have chickpeas, lentils, regular peas. So this one was kind of tricky because you can't have peanut butter. And I just did a round of keto before this where I was eating a ton of peanut butter. Um, so that was something in that category that I found kind of limiting. But, you know, it's all good. It's all good. Another category that you cannot have is any type of added sugar. So whether real or artificial. This includes honey, maple syrup, agave, stevia, splenda. All of that you cannot have. Um, this was tricky because this includes added sugars into um, food products. So for example, you can't have sriracha. Can't have sriracha. Oh my God, I can't even say that word. Sriracha because it has added sugars in it. Um, so this category, it seems easy at first, but I'll tell you a little bit more about it later. It involves a lot of label reading and showing that you can't eat these items that do have all these added sugars. It was also kind of tricky because I am big on adding sugar into my coffee, um, but it was one of my New Year's resolutions to be able to drink black coffee. So I thought this was a good start and not being able to add those sugars into my morning cup of joe. Another category that you cannot have is alcohol, um, which is pretty self-explanatory, but for some reason you can have kombucha, but you can't have vanilla extract. I don't have the explanation for that, but basically just no alcohol for 30 days. So no wine, liquor, white claws, nothing, no alcohol. Another category that you cannot have is pretty much just junk food or fake junk food. So what I mean by this, and this is the big um, difference between paleo and Whole30 because Whole30 is kind of a paleo diet, is that you can't recreate treats using Whole30 approved ingredients. So the reason for this is you can make Whole30 approved pancakes by blending a banana with two eggs, frying it up and calling it a pancake. However, Whole30 really wants to emphasize you distancing yourself from those temptation foods because you're basically telling yourself psychologically that you can still have pancakes when the goal is to create a better, re a better relationship with food and to know that pancakes aren't good for you, I can't have them at all. So even if you're using approved ingredients to create these treats, you can't have these fake treats. You also just can't have junk food in general. It's pretty self-explanatory. You no know, treats, sweets, cookies, chips, all that good stuff. The last category that you cannot have, and I have saved it for last because it was the most heartbreaking, is dairy. And I say that because I am a cheese girl. I will happily give up 
bread and pasta and rice for the rest of my life, but if you take away cheese, I'd rather just die. So cheese was gonna be a hard one for me, I knew that from the get-go. Um, you also can have other dairy products such as milk, yogurts, cream, um, and again that was tricky for me because I'm just coming off the heels of keto where you know you're adding heavy cream to everything, you're cooking everything in butter. Um, so you're really trying to eliminate dairy and you can't have it at all, which I thought was really important because I bloat and I've had suspicions that the dairy is what's causing me to bloat and I actually think I said this in my first blog when my first vlog when I talked about doing the whole 30 diet but yeah I just think that um dairy might be making me bloat and so I think that might be my trigger which is why I wanted to do the whole 30 challenge and see how it goes but I'll get more into that later um because the last category of rules is that you cannot weigh yourself for a whole 30 days and at first I was kind of like okay like I think that's dumb because I like to see my results every like once a week hopping on the scale and seeing if I've made any progress. Um, so what I did is I went to my mom, I handed her my scale and I said just take this away from me for the month because I just can't weigh myself. Um, so I think that's one of the other um, benefits of Whole30 is that they're trying to get you to create a better relationship with food and not fixate on the scale and whether you're seeing changes by changing how you eat. It's more about how you feel. Um, and how it affects your body. So that's a little bit more about what Whole30 is. I'll leave some links below um, for some some more helpful resources that kind of explain things better, like why the heck you can't have vanilla extract. Um, but that's just a little overview of what Whole30 is. So I wanted to talk about why I chose to do the Whole30 diet. Um, this is a diet that's really popular on January 1st, you know, a good reset to the start of the new year. But I started it on April 1st, and that's because we had just gone into quarantine, and I was looking to lose a little bit of weight that I've been holding on to for a while. I have plateaued in my weight loss journey despite, you know, regularly exercising, watching what I eat, you know, not, I gave up fast food for the most part. And I wanted to do something while we were in quarantine to basically lose the extra pounds. Um, so I started a series called my glow up, my quarantine glow up, and I'll link that um, above here, where I came up with all of these different goals that I wanted to accomplish in 30 days. And I chose the Whole30 diet because it's a diet that it's intended for short term results but it's also something that you can't necessarily cheat on. So one of the things with Whole30 is that if you slip up or if you cheat, you're supposed to start over. So it's one of those good psychologically taxing diets because you really have to be mindful about what you're eating, not cheating and not being tempted by things. I also chose the Whole30 diet because I have done it before and I found that it was difficult doing it before because the pressure of society really gets to you. And what I mean by that is, you know, you go out for drinks with friends and because you can't have alcohol, you have to sit there and get a soda water. Or, you know, friends and family are inviting you out for dinners and you have to be mindful of what's on the menu. You have to do your research before. You might even have to go and not order anything because everything has added sugars. So it was really tough doing it my first round just because of all the pressure to, you know, not, impose your diet upon other people. It's also hard going to meetings when there's pastries and cookies everywhere and you just want it because it's free and there. But with the Whole30 diet and being in quarantine and isolation, I figured this is the best time to do it because I don't have all of that pressure to eat something or eat that pastry, you know, with my friends aren't going, get a drink, lame-o. So that's one of the reasons I also chose Whole30. Um, because you can't cheat on it and there wasn't that much pressure externally while being in quarantine. So what I did was I took some before photos and I put on um, a swimsuit that I wear in all of my before photos. Um, I don't know if you guys do this too. Let me know in the comments below if I'm crazy or if you guys do this too. Where I have years and years of before photos in the same outfit because I always think I'm gonna make my transformation. And granted, over the years I have gone up and down, so I have made a transformation of some sort, but I just have the same pose in the same outfit for years and years and years, just kinda trying to track my progress. So I put on the same swimsuit that I have been for the past 10 years, 
um, and basically took my before photos for this challenge. I also wanted to put on um, this pair of white shorts that I've been trying to fit into for several years now. They were hand-me-downs from my sister, and to me that is a true mark of being thin and fit and healthy if I could fit into her size. So I put on this pair of shorts, which I recently was able to actually button, and I wanted to wear these because I thought it showed how my body changes by wearing the wrong size, essentially. So if you look at these photos, um, you can see that I look heavier than I actually am just because they're ill-fitting shorts. So that was one of my markers for success is by this bathing suit and these white pair of shorts. I weighed in starting weight at 142. For reference, I am five feet, four inches. And another thing I wanted to point out from these before photos was that I noticed my posture was really bad and I actually started another challenge separately of how to improve your posture. Um, so stay tuned for that video because I noticed just from taking these photos naturally how I stand that that is not how I wanna present myself. Um, so yeah, stick around for that video because that's coming up next uh, in terms of a challenge that I tried to achieve. All right, so I took my before pics, I committed to the Whole30 challenge, and I started. So while on Whole30, I would just like to say overall, I thought it was pretty easy. And I think that's because I learned that I kind of naturally eat in this paleo Whole30 lifestyle. Um, again, I don't eat that many carbs. Um, I am more of a cheese girl. Like I said, I'll say it again because it was so hard. Um, but I thought it was easy, you know? I would recommend if you want to do the Whole30 challenge, hop on Pinterest. Scroll through Pinterest for just hours and hours on end each night and find Whole30 recipes that appeal to you because there's all different kinds of things. I was never hungry on this diet because I was eating things that I actually enjoyed and I actually liked. I was vlogging a lot of the meals that I was eating just because I thought it was so delicious. Um, maybe not the most visually appealing, but everything that I ate was really good. Things that you can have on the Whole30 diet are, you know, a lot of vegetables. Um, you can have fruit, although in moderation because again you are trying to decrease the amount of sugars that you are consuming and fruit does have a lot of natural sugars but sugars nonetheless you also can have all kinds of meat and seafood um, but this was one of the challenges that i encountered was that you can only have unprocessed meats and this is kind of where my cons come in is that Whole30 involves a lot of label reading. So you become a lot more aware of what's in your food because you can't have it. So I went to the store going like, all right, I'm gonna get bacon, that's a meat. Do you know how many added sugars are in bacon that you can't just go to Ralph's and buy a package of bacon? No. So I had to go to like specialty health stores to find unprocessed bacon and unprocessed meat and grass-fed burgers just to be able to accomplish all of the goals in terms of no added sugars, unprocessed, no junk food, that sort of thing. So I did find that difficult in that it became exhausting reading every label of every bottle of salad dressing. You know, you had to find certain approved foods from Trader Joe's or Sprouts that you could only have this type of salsa, you could only have this type of pasta sauce, or you could only have coconut aminos, which is a replacement for soy sauce. You know, so it was it was pretty tiring just having to read every little thing and go, can't have that, can't have that. But again, I also found it easy because I did look on Pinterest for just simple, simple recipes. I wasn't going too crazy. I wasn't trying to create some type of crazy casserole where I had to replace every little ingredient with a Whole30 approved ingredient. Um, so one of my tips would be just keep it simple, keep it easy, and find things that you enjoy eating. Another hard part of the Whole30 diet was actually the societal pressure. <laughs> what I mean by that is that my dad would cook a lot and he'd cook delicious looking things and I would kind of just be like, Dad, you know I can't have that. That's really cruel. Look at that. So when it all done, you just soup them over, over, the, over the biscuits when you pull them out, put them, over, put them on a plate, bada bing. Bada boom. But I can't have any of that. I also hopped on a Zoom birthday call and everybody had drinks and we started playing drinking games and I had to drink a sparkling water and kind of watch all my friends get buzzed on camera because I couldn't drink. So that was kind of unfortunate. Um, 
but again, it was a lot easier than if the world were open and back to normal um, and having to say no to my friends in that way. But it was tricky in some parts of, you know, feeling a little bit limited despite being at home and only having that being my option. Let's talk results. Sorry, I didn't mean to bury the lead. Just wanted to go chronologically, but we're at the results now. Um, so my results with Whole30, um, I'll tell this cinematically. It's May 1st and I'm ready to weigh in and see my results. I kindly asked my mom for my scale back. It's early in the morning, I'm at my lightest weight. Hop on the scale and I weigh 138, which means I lost three pounds in a month. And when I tell you that I was this close to crying, well, I, I think I cried. I think I was really upset that I had only lost three pounds in 30 days after doing everything correctly, working my butt off and doing everything right. So I picked myself off of my bed from my pity party and I was like, let's take my after photos, see if there's something there. And here are my after photos. As you can see, I did lose something. Apparently it wasn't that much weight, but I did lose a lot of flab. Like look at this photo of my back and just how my rolls are so much less than they were a month ago. Um, those white shorts fit so much easier. And I did lose two inches in my lower pooch, which is somewhere that I have been trying to lose anything from for like the past year that I've plateaued in this weight loss journey. So I think it's crazy how, you know, I cried because I didn't lose that much weight, but physically changes did happen. So after my before and after pictures, I was super excited that, okay, I actually did, you know, lose something and I did see a physical change. I sent my photos to my sister who does Whole30, like rounds of Whole30 all the time. And the first thing she asked, she was like, how was your sleep? Like, were you sleeping better? And I was like, was I sleeping better? I don't know, was that a side effect? And I told her like, I don't know, I was meditating before bed and I was also journaling right before bed. Um, again, that was part of my quarantine glow up. If, make sure to check that out. Um, so I was like, I don't know if I'm sleeping better because I'm doing several different things. So I don't think so. Cue the first week of May when I start reintroducing back those limiting um, categories. The first week of May, I could not fall asleep for hours. And I was baffled because I was like, oh man, I didn't realize how easy I had been able to fall asleep for the past 30 days. But as soon as it was taken away from me, it was like the end of the world. And I even checked my Fitbit because I was like, wait, is this real? So during the whole month of April, I was averaging consistently on a daily basis more than my yearly average of 7.3 hours per night. As soon as the first week of May hit, when I started reintroducing back some of those categories, I was all over the place. I was wildly inconsistent. I could not fall asleep easy enough. So I thought it was interesting how I didn't even realize that that was a benefit to the whole 30 plan that I was benefiting from, but didn't even realize it. So that is one great pro, I would say, probably one of the best things about Whole30 was that I was able to fall asleep, stay asleep, and just get a better night's rest overall over the 30 days. The last benefit that I wanted to touch on, um, I don't know if it actually affected me, but I did wanna bring it up um, because my sister mentioned it. She asked if my skin improved. And I don't want to attribute this completely to Whole30, but my skin did improve tremendously over the past 30 days. However, I was doing several different challenges at once. So I was drinking a gallon of water a day. I didn't wear makeup for the month. I put myself on a solid skincare routine and apparently I was sleeping a lot more. Um, so I was doing things that did improve my skin in addition to my diet. So um, I wanted to mention that because I do think it is a benefit of trying out this diet, but I can't contribute all of my improvements in my skin to just the Whole30 diet. So the last category I wanted to talk about was the reintroduction of these food categories that you have eliminated for the past 30 days. 
and no surprise here, I ate a block of cheese first. Not like a, a whole block more, just like shredded cheese by the handful as soon as the clock struck midnight. No, I'm just kidding. But I did eat cheese first. Um, and I did absolutely bloat. I bloated like crazy and I was like, all right, all right. So it's dairy. But I did learn that I can't give up cheese and that that was silly of me to think that that would be sustainable giving up cheese for forever just because it makes me bloat a little bit. So I did learn that that was one of my triggers, which is the purpose of Whole30 to kind of figure out what food categories might be inhibited, inhibiting your weight loss or just making you feel not to your optimal level. Another thing that happened was day two, I had a glass of wine and I got turned from one glass. And I attribute that to the fact that there weren't any carbs in my system to soak up the alcohol. So it hit me way faster than normal. Um, so definitely a side effect would be that your alcohol tolerance might decrease, but I kind of saw that as a benefit. I was like, dang, I'm a cheap date. Like I'm gonna save some money here. Um, so keep that in mind. The other thing that I introduced were um, sweets. So it was Mother's Day here and I just kind of like let loose with cookies and cake, all the sweets that we had. And I feel like with a thing like Whole30 is that the purpose is to eliminate cravings so that by the end of the 30 days you go, wow, I didn't need all that stuff anyway. Who needs cake when I could have an apple to treat myself? That's in a perfect world, that's not how it was. I was like, no, give me the cookies. Um, so it eliminated the cravings, yes, for the past 30 days, but once I know that I'm allowed to have it again, I'm gonna eat the cookie, I'm gonna eat the cake, and I'm gonna enjoy it. So moving forward, you know, in moderation, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna eat the cookie, I'm gonna eat the cookie. All right, so final thoughts and overall thoughts of Whole30 is that I found it pretty easy. Um, and again, that's just for me personally. So I tend to, you know, naturally not eat a lot of the foods that you have to eliminate. So, you know, all of those carbs in terms of the legumes, the grains. I'm also not a big drinker. Um, I'm a, very much a social drinker. So the fact that I couldn't drink this month where I wasn't doing anything social came pretty easy for me. Um, and that may not be the case for you. You might be like, I need bread and pasta or I'll die. Or I need to have a glass of wine every night or I will murder somebody. In which case this may not be the diet for you or it may be a great diet for you to challenge yourself to eliminate those things and make healthier choices. Um, I think that one of the greatest benefits of this diet was it really did help me create a better relationship with food. So yes, it was cumbersome having to read all of these labels, but it really did kind of open your eyes to all the different like chemicals and added sugars that are in all of the condiments that you tend to naturally reach for. And it kind of made me realize, you know what, I don't need all of those condiments or I can have a healthier alternative to those condiments. And I really do think it created um, a psychological reset in the sense that, you know what, I don't need those banana pancakes in the morning, I can have eggs or I don't need a sweet treat at night, you know, I can have an apple. We'll see how that goes moving forward. But I do think that it makes me want to eat those whole foods in a better quality way. If you wanted to start the Whole30 diet, I would say one of the most important things you can do is just meal plan. And I don't mean meal prep, I did do a ton of meal prepping. Um, and that was just because I meal prep all the time anyway, and that's easier for me. But meal planning, because if you go to the fridge at night going, I need dinner and I'm starving, and there's uh, only things with added sugars or super processed meats or just a big old Tupperware full of rice, and you can't have it, you're going to cheat, and then it's going to defeat the whole purpose of the reset. So you really do have to plan ahead in terms of your meals, your ingredients on hand, um, all of the things that you're allowed to eat. So I learned to have cans of coconut milk all the time in the pantry. Um, I learned to buy frozen burgers as kind of like my emergency meal in the event that I run out of food or I can't have anything that's in the fridge. So meal planning is essential to this um, and kind of realizing all the different things you can eat and making sure that you're stocked up on those. Lastly, I think the best thing that happened during this Whole30 diet 
was actually not weighing myself for 30 days. So I know who I am as a person and I know that I like to weigh myself once a week to see if I'm making progress. If I had done that throughout these past 30 days, I probably would have quit halfway through because I would have been like, this isn't working. This is stupid. I haven't lost any pounds on the scale. But you saw in my photos that things were happening. My body was changing and I was getting slimmer. So the fact that it didn't reflect that much on the scale, I think shows that there's more to being healthy than what's on the scale. And I know everybody says that, but I feel like this is a tried and true example of that. So really not weighing myself, I think I actually kind of want to do that moving forward. I think it creates a better relationship with my body and that it's not just about that number, it is about how I feel and the physical changes that I'm making. So moving forward, I think I will implement some aspects of Whole30 in the sense that I probably will continue to not eat, you know, legumes or grains. Um, I'll probably still continue to limit my alcohol because we're still under quarantine and I don't feel the need to drink by myself. I'm very much a social drinker. So unless the restaurants open up and we're good to party, I think I'm okay on that. I, of course, will be eating cheese. Um, but because it did make me bloat, you know, being more mindful about how much I'm eating and not adding it to every little thing that I'm eating. The other part that I want to implement is being more mindful about eating good for you foods. I'm not going to be buying the unprocessed bacon that doesn't have added sugars if I don't have to, but I do want to focus on, okay, I should be getting, you know, chicken breasts over a frozen TV dinner and making meals that are good for me and are just holistically better for my body. So that's a look into my journey doing the Whole30 diet for the past 30 days. Let me know if you guys want any more specific videos about like more tips on Whole30, maybe some recipes, or if you guys want me to try some other crazy diet because I love trying diets. Is that, is that weird to say? But like, you know those people who are like always on a diet? Like that's me. So if you have any other like requests like that, let me know. Um, I am newer to YouTube, but I'm finally getting the swing of things and I'm having fun. So I'd love for you to come back and join me. Again, keep an eye out for that posture video um, because that will be coming out soon. So thanks again for tuning in and seeing my results on Whole30. Toodles! Oh, oh, lastly, guys, I can finally drink black coffee and I think... That's pretty cool.